I have a special attachment to libraries. I feel at home when I'm in the library. Actually, when I was in Ias de Jesus, uh, during my elementary days, I, I get excited borrowing books on a Friday so that I can spend the weekend reading uh, uh, stories, short stories, fairy tales, uh, uh, cartoons, uh, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and, and other uh, children's fairy tales. So I had built a fantasy around me when I was young and I find it more productive talking to a book than talking to a person because with a book it's limitless no one is there to to criticize your ideas and at the same time it's a silent but very fruitful product uh, a, a very fruitful activity in my case so that's why I, I would even say uh, the library card is more important than the report card let me repeat it the library card for me is more important than the report card well you can have your own interpretations about it but in my case that is literally true then after elementary i went to san agustin high school that was the time where i encountered the uh, philosophy books about plato aristotle i began to read them oh boy i cannot understand really what i'm reading but i find it so beautiful in the same way that when you listen to classical music to mozart and beethoven the music would 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 elevate you and you just don't know why you can put it into words that's what makes it a masterpiece a classics it's it's perennial the inspiration never ends so i had just thinking back right now i had that kind i realized i built that kind of environment then i entered uh, in university of san agustin in college and then i went inside the library and whether you believe it or not when I, I just entered the reference section, then I saw all these books. It was so noisy. It was so noisy because I could hear the books shouting to me to read them. Well, of course, the library is quiet, but I find it so intellectually noisy. It's like a buffet of ideas in front of you, and you just can choose anything an encyclopedia uh, a reference book that you haven't seen big hardbound books and then sit there with a very big table with a very comfortable chair with all these uh, ambient lights and then everyone is quiet everyone is sitting down and bowing and opening their mind opening the book for more wisdom and knowledge so so i started with that so yes i do admit i'm guilty i'm a bibliophile I, I, I'm into it. So that's, that's the thing that I also want to share with you all, not just to my students, but to everyone, even to parents who are asking this question. Why can't I inspire my children to read? Well, I don't know. The, the home environment is one factor. But there's something, something existential about it and that's what i'm going to share along with you uh, i i developed this passion for reading for me reading is not a, a subject reading is is a lifestyle it's it's a way of life for me it's it's my lifeblood i may say i would spend more money buying books than anything else i would spend more time reading books than with anything or anyone else for that matter but for now it's getting longer but for now let me just share with you uh, three books that I really love I would read them again and again and then the second thing for this video also is some words of encouragement to the let takers who are preparing for the licensure examination for teachers this coming September 2021 just some ideas that I had 
why I became a let top notcher and then lastly lastly to my special dear subscribers I have a special performance for you later at the end of the video in relation with the celebration of the Araw ng Kagitingan. So that's for today. Let's go! So this is the first book that I would like to share with you. This is a book by Ayn Rand. And uh, she, I find it, it's a serendipity, if you can, it's a coincidence that I, I was going, you know, actually I have this habit of uh, bookstore hopping. I would, I would go to bookstores in a single afternoon. I actually I call it book therapy. I, I if I feel happy, I will buy a book. If I feel sad, I will buy a book. If I don't feel anything, I'll just buy a book. And in one of those days, I went inside a bookstore. Then uh, I happened to see this, and I really didn't have any plan to buy anything. So I just okay, let's see, let's let's buy it because it's thick. <laughs> That's the other thing. So it's thick, and it's only uh, 349 pesos. So let's see if I, I want to. I want to be open-minded. There's this. Uh, there's this uh, teacher who said, uh, if you have to read things that you don't agree with, or you have to read things, or books or references that somehow you're not interested in because that widens your knowledge or your appreciation of the uh, of the community of ideas of the continuing conversation of ideas so i, I bought this book uh, uh, at an instant then so uh, so i read it so uh, well with this book the idea is uh, you have to live a heroic life because that's the only life you have and you have to live for something or someone. And the character of this book, Howard Rourke, actually did it. He found meaning in his life based on his purpose, not based on the standard of society. Meaning you're not you're not following the herd mentality. So that's it. That's Ayn Rand, uh, living a heroic life. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Okay, so, so, so next, let's proceed or else I will just continue talking about uh, the book. This one, uh, this was given to me by Sir Pierre Prudente. Uh, I'm, I'm teaching in Paref Westbridge, uh, exclusive school for boys. And then one of my colleagues who, who happened to be also a book lover. And it's nice being with the, such kind of community. So. He, he gave me this book. This is his book. I, I don't know if I can go to that level, you know, giving away my books. <laughs> I feel they're so precious, not my precious. <laughs> anyway, so, so he gave me this book and I really, well, you, you just, it's the first Filipino. It's, it's a biography of a Rizal by Leon Maria Guerrero. Uh, it's, it's hardbound and it's, and well, for you, this may look boring, but for me, it's, it's really great and well I when I was in college University of San Agustin we had a subject obviously uh, Rizal then uh, well uh, I just find to love that person who happens to live an, a heroic life no? well I read it our book is the book of Zaide no? the blue one I actually just bought a second-hand book I, because it's a textbook. <laughs> I have a bias against textbook. So I didn't buy a textbook about the Rizal, but I have books about the Rizal. <laughs> so, so this one, uh, uh, to Sir Pierre Prudente, thank you for, for this gift. So, yeah, yeah, yes, I, uh, well, 1.1, 1 .1, that's my grade in the Rizal when I was in college. But I forgot almost everything about Rizal. And anyway, there's no harm to it. You can Google it and find the information that you need for more than what you need. But there is one thing that I learned and I applied. And that is, Rizal would write, your, would do journaling, would start writing his thoughts, his feelings, his, his life. That's what makes him readable, so to speak. 
because we are able to get inside his mind as he deems it necessary to share to others. So that idea of writing your life, putting it into words, oh, I did it. I actually have a journal. I started writing a journal when I was in college and some portions of it, I actually show it to my students in, in Westbridge. I try to read them some uh, entries in my journal and oh boy, you see there, there are all the mistakes, all the outbursts of ideas and sometimes when you read it, you just started to say, was this me two years ago? And then, uh, yeah, I even wrote a, a prediction that I'm going to top a national exam. I wrote it. Uh, the, I took the let September 2016, but before that, April 2016, I wrote in my laptop that I'm going to top the let. It was April. And then from April to September, when I go to work in Westbridge, I have to pass by San Agustin. So I see all the tarpaulins there. So every day when I go, before I, before I go to work, I would see all those tarpaulins and then boom i would just imagine myself being there it, and it it creates an electricity inside of me and then i would start walking going to school i think walking really works because your ideas are free to roam around so and then to recharge you for your dreams so that's what it that's it so i, I wrote it there and then it's kind of it has this effect that when I read that part of my journal, that April 2016, and wrote there, I'm going to be a laptop culture, and reading it now, who, well, the best way to predict the future is to create it, and to believe that you can do it. Just getting emotional about it. Whew, that was it. Dua pa lang nakalibro. <laughs> anyway, let's proceed to the, to the third and last one for today. <laughs> so, now, this is my recent favorite author, Jordan B. Peter Peterson. Uh, he's, he has no qualms saying things that other people won't agree with. Uh, you have to... You have to speak your truth or else you will be living a lie and when I say truth it's not about being always correct it's about being authentic with your with your life with your expression of course it's easier said than done because we need to somehow uh, conform to society or else we will all be anarchists and not just obey because I don't want to because I feel like it but that's not it but what Jordan Peterson is trying to say is that uh, especially to to teenagers or to young adults let's let's work more about responsibilities instead of rights let's forget about your rights let's focus more on your responsibility well I'll just give a very simplistic answer well you have the right to complain about all the injustices in the world you know? and it would sound like that very uncomfortable but you can't control it you want to kill it to it, <laughs> to take it away but you just can't you have to the show must go on but then that's it so he said you can complain about all the injustices in the world but first clean your room do household chores it's your responsibility to be good where you are right now before you go out there and shout to change the world that's that's Jordan Peterson and uh, and lastly he would talk uh, he would talk about never do something out of empathy out of love for someone else who is struggling to do it because you can already see that he is having difficulty with his independence but the moment you help him or her he will entirely 
the, his independence will entirely disappear. So that's 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 a, that's a good idea. So make people struggle because it's the only or one of the ways where that person will realize how independent he should be because eventually he should be able to decide to decide on his own children eventually have to grow up and become mature if you don't give them the environment to decide and make mistakes along the way because you always love them and protect them and shield them from all harm and uh, negative emotions they will never have the backbone to stand up and rise facing society with all its injustices but with all its possibilities <sighs> yeah so those were the books this would sound like a podcast already <laughs> but anyway so, so that's it my, my dear subscribers and even to the let takers why did I top the let well number one I read a lot so when you read a lot grammar becomes natural my highest grade is gen ed when you read a lot vocabulary becomes natural spelling becomes natural when you read a lot you can read longer periods of time just like what happens in the exam no? you have to sit there for hours and read and think so since i was already reading and thinking for long hours in a way i'm already trained or comfortable sitting reading and thinking taking the exam that's a thing and then the last thing is since i read a lot from across different fields so it becomes overlapping or interdisciplinary so i get to appreciate appreciate the exam in its entirety i don't separate it i embrace idea or knowledge as a whole that's the universal thinking that i have so so that's it and uh, can i inspire you to read maybe not but then for me it made a lot of difference and i think that's our mission in life to make a difference if not for others then maybe just for yourself and who knows that difference is the meaning that you're looking for till next time Aanhin ang bayan na puno ng yaman Kung ito ay karangyaan na walang kalayaan Kung hindi man lang natin may sasabuhay Ang dahilan ng kanilang pagkamatay Ay di alintanang wala ring patutunguhan Ang selebrasyon ng araw ng kagitingan Ito rin ay panawagan sa mga kabataan Na pinaniniwalaan na pag-asa ng bayan na gamitin ang talino hindi lang sa pag-aaral kundi pati na rin sa mabuting asal. Saan pa natin kukunin ang lakas kung ang dahas ay di na kaya ng batas? Kung ang buhay ng ating mga bayani ay sa atin inilaan, atin naman sanang panindigan ng buong puso't isipan. Dapat pa ba nilang ialay ang buhay ng paulit-ulit para ating mapalagahan ang ating nakamit? Puro katanungan na lang ang aking iaalay dahil ang sagot ay nakakoom sa iyong mga kamay. <laughs>